Welcome back to the show. The world of sci-fi is as big as, well, the universe. There's lots of subgenres to explore, and this morning we're looking specifically into Afrofuturism with the online bookstore Sista Sci-Fi. And her creator, Isis Asare, is here. So Sister Sci-Fi started February 2nd, 2019, our first book club event celebrating the Gilded Stories by Jules Gomez. And it really started from my personal passion for um, science fiction and really wanting to discuss the themes of diversity um, and gender equality um, and queer identity that were coming up in a lot of the books I was reading and wanted to have a community around it to like not only discuss but dive into and like see how we can apply those lessons to our life and really creating a community of people who are really celebrating diversity in science fiction through connecting primarily online in COVID but also in person. Let's talk about the bookstore. What can people find there? Tell me all about it. Yeah, the bookstore, we carry about 200 titles, most, and we focus on science fiction written by Black and Native American women. So you'll find everything by Octavia Butler, you'll find everything by Naila Hopkinson, um, we also carry works by N.K. Jemison, who's a MacArthur Award-winning um, writer. We also carry independent authors who you may not have heard about, but also um, create amazing content and breaking boundaries in science fiction, not just because they're diverse characters, but because they're great stories with lots of imagination, a lot of old history. We carry Nisi Shaw, who's a Seattle-based writer um, and did a lot of great things in this space. You know, sci-fi is already a category of its own. Why do you think it's so important to have a space for Afrofuturism specifically? Mm -hmm. I love that question. Um, there's a great quote that says that the work of the oppressor is to subvert our imagination as the oppressed. Um, and I think the key step to freedom is really allowing your imagination to roam free. And with science fiction, you can do that. Any assumption, any blockers, any limitation that you feel like you have in your real life, you can remove them in science fiction, and particularly um, in a very culturally aware way in Afrofuturism, and begin to imagine what does that look like? What if I had no limits as a woman or as a black person or no limits due to class? And I could imagine space travel or time travel. Mm -hmm. What does equity look like in those types of frameworks? So that's why I think Afrofuturism is particularly important. Now, a lot of people obviously point to Nichelle Nichols, who we celebrate on this show all the time. We love her as kind of one of the first influences when it comes to this. How do you think Star Trek on a whole has done a really good job or maybe could have done better when it comes to Afrofuturism? Star Trek is amazing, right? It was so groundbreaking yeah. at, for that time, right? And you have actresses like Michelle Nichols, who like literally Martin Luther King, like when she was like, I don't know if I want to do the show, like, please stay. Like, I'm a Trekkie. Like, I love watching on the show. Um, and, you know, we're all standing on the surface of giants. So how that paved the way for Mae Jemison, how that comes full circle back to media and paves the way for Black Panther and like all the other representations of Afrofuturism and pop culture, such as Janelle Monet. And then we're sitting in a period where you have several of Octavia Buck Butler's works in production for television, including N.K. Jemison. So I think it's a step forward. And I think it speaks to the importance of just existing in that space and that space of diversity in that intersection. So definitely a huge way and just kind of forging that path. I love it. I love it. Thank you. I'm so glad I asked you that question. Final question is what book do you recommend right now? For people who like have read everything in science fiction, I always love to recommend An Unkindness of Ghost by Rivers Solomon. It takes the social structure of the antebellum South, sets it like 200 years in the future on a spaceship, which sounds like it would be really traumatic, but Rivers Solomon does a great job in creating a, a main character who's super smart, um, who's really in part, and ultimately wins at the end, and she's super diverse, so she's um, gender non-conforming, she's neurodivergent, 
So there's lots of compelling things about the ca character of Aster, in addition to being super smart and really powered. So those are people, that's, that's a book that I recommend for people who are like sci-fi nerds. For okay. people who are just beginning to explore Afrofuturism, like you have to start with like the grand dam of Afrofuturism, you have to start with Octavia Butler and Parable Disorder and Parable of the Talents. All right. Thanks to her for that.